If you play with it or not, you have to know about the Marochiband pawn structure. And that's because it can arise from almost every opening, from like e4, d4, c4, and the Marozzi bind pawn structure is known for the pawns on the c4 and e4 squares, and so you have it with the white pieces. Now to fully understand these positions, you have to know some basic plans and features about the Marozzi bind pawn structure. There are of course advantages and disadvantages, so let me just show you some advantages that white has in this pawn structure. Now the first advantage that white has is this control over the d5 square. And why, why is this so important? That's because this is a central square and with these two pawns you're preventing black from playing a move such as d5. Um, uh, because he just wants to get more space in the center and challenge your center and you're successfully preventing this here. This d5 square is also a very good um, square for your pieces to go, let's say if your knight jumps here, this is a pretty good square. So that's why this control of the d5 square could be very useful for white. Now the second advantage of this position for white is that you have more space with these pawns here in the center and this means that you don't want to trade pieces because now if black has let's say a piece here, a piece here, 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 here and here his pieces are some of his pieces are kinda in the way uh, for each other and they can't freely move and if you exchange some of these pieces these pieces are going to have more freedom and this is just not the thing that you want to do, right? So remember, you have more space and that's why you want to avoid trades and just turn this space advantage into even more space advantage and try to squeeze him. And now the third thing that we have to say about the Marozzi bind is that as you can see, between these two pawns there is an open file um, which white might want to use he might put he, uh, here his queen, I mean his queen is already here, but he can put it there and also put his um, rooks here on this file and because he has this opportunity of controlling the d-file he should use this in his favor to occupy it and just do operations on this file. Now let's stop with the advantages here for white and let's look at some disadvantages that you have in this Maruti bind pawn structure. Now first of all, you can see that all these dark squares here are pretty weak for white. Because you have your pawns on the light squares and they're, they're not really controlling the dark squares and your opponent is usually going to have a bishop on this g7 square um, just dominating this diagonal here. So a lot of times you want to trade this bishop off with your bishop. And black is usually going to try to play something like bishop to d7 and bishop to c6 and he's going to try to attack your e4 pawn and you're probably going to have to defend it with the move f3 and you're going to weaken your dark squares even more. So that's that's your opponent's plan here. Uh, he has also a plan of uh, a6 and b5 challenging uh, your pawn structure. So your setup could be like this here or you could play a4 in some lines to um, try to prevent this idea um, they're both fine um, I personally would use this one probably with um, pawns like this but it's really your choice and the matter of the position now you might think okay you said good and bad things about the Marozzi bind pawn structure also two plans for um, the player with the black pieces to follow but now what should I do in this position? What are my plans? So the plans for white here are actually pretty simple um, you want to really uh, play f4 this is the first plan expand on the king side because you have more space and why not just grab m even more space and you also want a lot of times to play f5 after this, let's say uh, especially if the bishop is uh, here to gain a tempo and 
your rook is here also supporting all this stuff and your knight here probably so this is a pretty common uh, pawn push that you have to keep in mind when playing with the Maruti bind pawn structure now your second plan is basically pretty similar to the, um, the previous plan and it's to put your king on h1 and your rook to g1 and then expand on the king side again and also with g4 here um, and your king here might look a bit unsafe but uh, it's actually pretty safe here because the opponent's pieces are hardly going to um, attack you from there and you also have your pieces to protect your king the only way basically um, that your opponent could attack you is by playing um, bishop to c6 and just creating a pin here you of course have to watch for this so it really depends on the position sometimes this might be available let's say if you exchanged um, the light square bishops it's probably better to do this and it's really a very great idea many games ended in white's favor here and now your third plan here is to actually put your piece to a central square uh, for, to let's say d5 or d4 let's say you can put your knight here or your knight here on d5 and also let's say you will a lot of times have your bishop here on the d4 square and why do you want to do this you want to do this because every piece on a central square is more effective imagine a knight being there looking at a lot of squares and it's pretty useful here and if you compare it to a knight let's say here it's attacking only two squares and here it's attacking eight squares so that's really a basic explanation of why you want to put your pieces on a central square here and because you also have uh, support here from your pawns and from your uh, other pieces of course to make this happen now after I showed you good and bad sides of the Maruti bind pawn structure and the plans that you can use let's jump into an example from a real game oh and sorry I forgot to mention one more thing that you probably realized already that you have all these pawns on light squares and that means that your light squared bishop it's probably going to be pretty bad here when you have this structure because imagine a bishop let's say here doing nothing looking at these pawns so that's why a lot of times you want to exchange it because black plan is also to just get into a position when he has let's say a knight versus your bishop and his knight is going to be very active and your bishop is going to be very poor so you usually want to um, get rid of this bishop so let's start with this interesting game white started with the move c4 and i'm not going really going to go over the opening because it's not that important for us right now um, we're focusing on uh, Maruti bind pawn structure so they somehow um, got to this position and you can see already Maruti bind and it would basically arise from like c4 opening d4 e4 uh, anything <laughs> and this is just opening theory here which is not that important for us again and we just see normal developing moves and both sides castle and now in this position uh, white has a lot of times uh, in the in this structure a pretty good idea of playing knight to c2 and the point behind this move is that he doesn't want to trade pieces again like we said because white has more space here and he really doesn't want to do this uh, because here black could trade let's say if black was on move I don't know um, black could trade these pieces and he has now more space to move let's say his bishop can come to c6 square attack this pawn he really has more freedom here so that's that's the idea sometimes but he decided not to play this and he played queen to d2 developing his queen and also connecting his rooks which is always a great idea and also like trying to activate his rooks uh, like this so black here decided to exchange the knights 
because like we said um, he is going to get more space than, than he had before and now black used this idea here like we said attacking this pawn and white simply had to defend it and you can see this bishop now is really bad you really want to trade it and you don't want to come into a position where you are left with this bad bishop versus any opponent piece basically except for a pawn yeah, this would be pretty good but okay let's be realistic here and this bishop is really not a good piece and now black played knight to d7 um, this probably looks like a pretty weird move to you right I mean just trying to exchange these bishops we said this bishop is good this diagonal I mean what are you saying man um, but actually this is not such a bad move to make because now if white takes your bishop then white is actually getting less control over these dark squares here uh, because his bishop was basically his only piece that really controls these squares good because if let's say um, if knight could like magically appear here um, be supported by a pawn this queen now which is supporting these uh, black squares couldn't take it and let's say a bishop had the possibility to take it because this would be a fair trade so that's one reason why black played like this and the other reason is also simple because like we said this bishop is really bad and black is just exchanging other pieces and not uh, uh, his piece for this piece which is pretty good for him because who, who wants to have this bishop let's be real so that's why um, here white didn't take the bishop and he played um, bishop to e3 now we said earlier that white doesn't want to exchange pieces but now this exchange would be really good for white actually because now white has a bishop pair and <laughs> you would say a second ago you said this bishop is really bad but you, you can have uh, p the possibility of opening this bishop here also and and you have this dark squared bishop and your queen now you have really good control of these dark squares here and black king might be in danger in the future so that's why this isn't dangerous for white at all but rather for black that's why he played a5 and now you can see this king to g1 move even though it wasn't followed by rook to g1 but it's also a pretty useful move um, getting your king to a more safe square for because your dark squares are usually here weak and just getting out of these complications here is always a good idea also and here black put his knight to a fine c5 square and that's pretty normal and white played queen to c2 and just to know, the player with the fianchetto bishop usually doesn't want to trade his fianchetto bishop for anything, but in this position, like we said, these dark squares are really weakened and you want to make this trade. So, what was I saying? Wait, uh, <laughs> oh, uh, how to exchange these two bishops? Um, a pretty cool idea is, a lot of times, to put your queen on f8 uh, square, something like something like this if you have time and h5 king here and exchange bishops like this uh, <laughs> if you <laughs> saw this variation it really takes a lot of moves but if you manage to do this then you would probably have a very good position so worth mentioning okay so black here played queen to um, b6 maybe with this idea that i already um, talked about and okay now white played rook to b1 and now after a move rook c8 this idea might come into play now because it's really like it's five moves or something but it's worth trying because there's not like it's not like a crazy position like I don't know you're going to get checkmated you have you have some time here so White played rook to c1 here, which which looks like a pretty strange move to me. I don't I don't really understand this move, 
And we finally see the move h5 here, which is probably telling us that he wants to play this. And here, I mean, black doesn't even have need to have the support of the king here, because only this is enough, because white doesn't have a queen here to have extra pressure here. But at the end, he black didn't um, use this plan, and we'll see what happens. So b3, kind of solidifying the structure, keeping this bishop um, passive forever. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but okay, queen to b6, queen to b4. We see we see some moving of pieces here. Just um, just moves not that really uh, important for our topic here, but. Um, here when white moved out of this uh, diagonal, black used this uh, opportunity and moved his bishop on this diagonal here that he wanted. But white, okay, white moved the rook and now black tries to exchange queens. Well, if white decided not to trade queens, for example, a move like this, and this might be annoying because of <laughs> these kinds of moves, it looks pretty annoying and just it doesn't look great for white so that probably that's why he took the queen and now it still looks a little bit annoying for black uh, this bishop here and this knight on this uh, great square but white actually managed to win at the end so here he played his knight to a central square like we talked about um, Putting your piece to a central square, which is supported by your two pawns on c4 and e4. And this knight here, as you can see, is a very good piece. And that's why black wanted to exchange this piece and he did it right away. And now we got out of our Maruti band structure and got a pretty solid structure here with white. And now, okay, the game continued. This... You might say that this bishop is a bit better because it could go to this square, but it's still not that great. You should probably look at uh, a way to activate your light square bishop, maybe like this. But the whole game this bishop was really a bad piece and this bishop it's a pretty good piece. So now the game isn't really important for us because... Um, we're discussing the Marotti bind pawn structure today and we just got a different pawn structure here so I think I'm going to stop analyzing this example now okay just um, go to the end of this game and yeah he resigned um, <coughs> this is a really a winning position I mean if he goes there his mate and if he goes there then we also here have mate or just like this is just winning here so this was a very instructive example of showing the plants in the morality bind for the white side and for the black side so guys i hope you like the middle game series so far let me know if you find it useful down in the comments and i will see you in the next video